welcome to the UGC EPG Partial Lecture Series in Computer Science. In this series of lectures, we will be looking at the subject database management system. Today, I will be continuing on data mining, but I will be concentrating more on association rule that is linked with data mining techniques. Some of the learning objectives for this particular session include, initially we tend to study the importance of association rule. Then as part of association rule, we will have how to derive interestingness measures in association rules. Finally, we will talk on two certain algorithms which is called a priori and FP tree which is frequent pattern tree generation algorithms. Let us try understanding on the association rule mining. This association rule mining is very important model that has been studied extensively by database community. Why? Because most of the data that we tend to assume are categorical data and there are no specific or there are no good algorithms that are available by looking at the numeric data. So, the more common examples that we tend to use for association rules will be market basket analysis, which is to find how many items which can be purchased by customers are related. Let us try doing a small survey on the transactional data particular to market basket analysis. So, for this example of market basket analysis, let us assume basket 1 which carries bread, cheese and milk and basket 2 which carries apple, eggs, salt, yogurt until basket n say basket n has got uh, let us define it as 10 basket n has got biscuit, egg, milk. From this, there are very common questions that can arise from one's mind that what are the common items that are purchased. So, by looking at these 10 list of items, I can very well conclude on one or two items. But can I conclude saying that if I purchase item 1 and which leads us to purchase item 2 along with would be the actual point of question as part of association rules. So, so, this leads us or this just takes us to the next level whereby we write a rule which finds out possible combinations that might be useful for us to predict and keep appropriate items together. So, the basic items that we have tend to use it here are items which are nothing but an article in a basket that is bread is one item, cheese is the other item, milk eggs are individual items or it can be an attribute value pair also. And most of the this regular part of the database talks about transactions. So, if you look at all the list of items that has been purchased in basket 1 becomes one transaction, in basket 2 it becomes separate transaction. So, item purchased in a basket becomes a transaction it may have a particular transaction ID. So, basket 1 is being meant as transaction T1 which is transaction ID and a transactional data set is nothing but a set of transactions. Here I have I would say that I have purchased 10 different transactions or I have done 10 different transactions on a particular day. So, which says transactional data set. We will initiate our discussion on the item sets and association rules. As we have already seen item sets are nothing but a set of items which are like bread, milk, cereals which is a combination of item set where the items are milk, bread, individual items are the milk, bread and cereals. Putting together it becomes an item set. If I list it as k item set, it actually means an item set with k items. So, that is the common notion that we presented for item sets. Given a data set D, an item set X has a frequency count in D. So, number of times a particular item set appearing in the entire data set. So, an association rule is about relationships between two disjoint item sets. So, there is no connection between item 1 and item 2. I cannot say bread implies bread. So, two disjoint item sets x and y. x and y are to be a completely variant item list or item sets and this need to be particularly disjoint. I mean the word disjoint 
as individual or unique item values. So, it presents a pattern when x occurs, y also occurs. So, when I write a rule of association rule, so association format, it in turn means when x occurs, y also will occur. So, that will be a common implication. We will try understanding on the use of association rules. So, association rule does not represent any sort of causality or correlation between two item sets. It does not mean x y, x implies y does not mean x causes y, so no causality. x implies y can be different from y implies x. So, the purchase of forward through say x after having purchased bread, people tend to buy milk, but this may not be true at different instances. Say one instance it would have been true, but we measure the percentage of occurrence of bread to milk by looking at some of the very common interestingness measures. The same in reverse may not be true, after having purchased why x should be purchased may not be true unlike correlation. So, association rules assist majorly in applications like marketing, targeted advertising, floor planning, inventory control, churning management, homeland, homeland security and so. Say for example, in case of marketing, two products associated together you would have seen you can save this much amount. So, when you see a product one if individually purchased and people tend to produce by looking at that into the second product. So, when the common pattern says by purchasing on product one I might go to product one most of the times then this becomes a common practice or a pattern being generated this has been ultimately used for marketing. So, likewise this terms of association binding together one or more items or item values leads us to a better piece of marketing and a better advertisement also. But when we write association rules, it is not certainly that all rules are 100 percent many a times true. So, we do an interesting measures by way of defining two important measure values which is called support and confidence as part of association rule. So, support is termed to be a support of a particular item is in D is count of number of item sets, count of the number of item, item divided by D. For an association rule x implies y, we can calculate support of a specific rule which is equal to support of x and y, whereas confidence of x implies y is equal to support of x and y divided by support of x. Let us give a more clear explanation. So, we will try relating support and confidence to joint and conditional probability as it is used in the mathematics. So, there could be exponentially many association rules which can be generated as part of a transaction. Interestingness association rules are those whose support and confidence are greater than minimum support and minimum confidence. So, when we generate an association rule, we say it as interestingness association primarily because we may have to know, we may fix up a threshold value saying that this is the minimum support a rule needs to possess. So, over which everything falls becomes valid for a specific transaction. <coughs> so, some of the thresholds are set by database minus. So, let us look at the definitions of these two strong interestingness measures. So, the rule strength measures as I have already said two in two important interestingness measures one is support the other one is the confidence. By looking at support we say the rule holds with support in transaction that is on the entire transaction data set if the support percentage of transaction contains x union y. So, support is equal to probability of x and y or the x union y, whereas confidence will be the rule holds in the transaction of a specific data set with confidence if confidence percentage of transaction that contains x also contains y, which becomes probability, conditional probability of y and x. So, an association rule is a pattern that states when x occurs, y also occurs 
with but with a certain probability. So, this has been given in another terms like support is equal to x union y count of x union y divided by total available transactions and confidence is equal to count of x union y divided by x count of x. Now, let us try to understand the strength of rules and we will identify the goals and the key features of these rules. The goal of writing or identifying the strength support and confidence is to find all rules that satisfy minimum support and minimum confidence. So, the key features that are associated with this strength measure will be completeness where we tend to find all the rules together and there are no target items on the right hand side of our rule. Mining with data on the hard disk where we do not need most of the memory to be utilized. By looking at support and confidence by writing rule, we, you can ask me a question how is it different from different algorithms. Say if you look at classification, classification is one of the technique of data mining where when we have supervised learning where we train with 80 data sets, we train a specific instance that leads us to a specific classifier. Whereas unsupervised learning are termed as clusterings which wherein we do not train anything, we can directly put in for testing to actually take a decision. So, the major steps in association rules are we have frequent item set generation and we write rules, we derive rules. So, this use support and confidence in association mining where S for item set and C for rule derivation. Now, let us look at in close of transaction data representation where we have a simplistic view of a shopping basket and some important information which we, we need not consider. Say for example, quantity of each item purchased. So, number of quantities of every item. So, we are looking at the item sets alone and we are not looking at how many have been purchased and the total price that we have derived. So, that is irrelevant as part of this a priori algorithm list. So, let us try to understand how we calculate support and confidence having given a specific data set. So, I am trying to define a data set which is mentioned as D with 4 transaction ID and the different item sets. Say transaction T100 ID T100 has 3 transaction item sets which is 1, 3 and 4. T200 has got 2, 3 and 5. T300 has got 1, 2, 3 and 5 and T400 has got 2 and 5 which actually means say one has been replaced by some item item value and uh, item name and three has been replaced by other item name, four has been replaced by other item name. So, now our importance or the actual intention is to create the count, support and confidence. If you look at count of one and three that is item sets one and item set three, how many times? this item has been purchased of the 4 transaction or 4 transaction list. 1 and 3 happens twice in this 4 transaction or twice in the data set. So, the count of 1 and 3 is 2. Whereas, when you look at the total number of data sets, number of data set is 4. So, T100, T200, T300 and T400, the number of transaction number of data sets is 4. So, if you measure the support of 1 and 3 item set purchase 1 and 3 together, then it becomes 2 divided by 4. So, by looking at the definition x union y that is 1 union 3, 1 and 3 together divided by the total number of transactions that has happened. So, 2 divided by 4 becomes 0.5. Whereas, if you calculate the percentage of 3 tending to 2, 3 tending to 2 is again 2 times that is trained to produce 3 tending to 2, 2 divided by the total number of transactions. So, it is also 0.5. Whereas, if you try understanding on the confidence where 3 tending to 2 it will be 0.67 which will be the probability of 3 divided by the, uh, it is actually been by the conditional probability. 
0.67. So, let us try algorithm, uh, let us try getting closer to this algorithm uh, which is called a priori algorithm where the intention is to basically study the all possible combinations that we tend to produce. So, as part of a priori algorithm we have two definitive stages, one is called join, the other one is called prune. By joining we mean that all possible combinations are to be studied. So, let me give you closer intention on that, but before that we will tend to understand on the different mining algorithms. So, there are large number of algorithms, mining algorithms that is closely existing, but they use different strategies and different data structures. So, their resulting sets of rules are all the same. So, after we generate any number of strategies, but then we are very close to writing a very common rule which might be efficient enough, which should be efficient enough in identification of a specific result. So, given a transaction data set T and a minimum support and minimum confidence. So, this is what is quite important. How do we fix upon the minimum support and minimum confidence to set the association rule existing in T use uniquely determined. Any algorithm should be should find the same set of rules although their computational efficiency and memory requirements may be different. So, it is irrelevant that we look at their computational the computational uh, efficiency of an algorithm and the memory requirement as part of the system is some which is something different. But then the algorithm typically it considers only the rule format. So, here we stud try studying on the a priori algorithm. As I have told you a priori algorithm probably the best known possible algorithm which studies on all possible combinations because it takes up even one single value or combination of n number of values together. So, this has been done basically by two steps. Step 1 is to find all item sets that have minimum support that is frequent item sets also called large item sets. This uses frequent item sets to generate rules. We will try identifying the frequent item sets. Say for example, these are individual item sets. Then by joining I say what are the various possible joints that can be made with A and B, A and C together, A and D together. Likewise, all possible combinations that is to the second order and the, to the third dimension we have A, B, C together, A, B, D together. So, how many levels we can go up is starting from one dimension to two dimension to three dimension until fourth dimension we may proceed. So, this is what is the major frequent item sets that can that a system can generate. So, a frequent item set is an item set whose support is greater than or equal to the minimum support. So, by the a priority a priori property which is downward closure property any number of subsets of frequent item set are also a frequent item set. So, any number of subsets that we tend to produce as part of this item set will lead to a frequent item set. As I have already said this a priori takes up join as one of the operator by join initial intention we may not consider join because we are to process individual item sets in the initial turn, but as an iterative procedure. So, this is an iterative algorithm as an iterative procedure we tend to proceed with further join or possible combinations of two different item values. So, it is an iterative algorithm find all one item frequent item sets. As a next level we tend to produce two item frequent item sets and for the example that we have considered with four item set values, we may go up to a maximum of four item frequent item sets. In each iteration k, only consider item sets that contain some k minus that is subset k minus 1 frequent item sets. So, for frequent item sets of size 1 which will be f1, from k is equal to 2, we generate candidates of size k those item sets of size k could that could be frequent given the frequent k minus 1. When we have frequent item sets k, those item sets that are actually frequent, but it is a subset 
which need to scan the overall database at least once. By looking at this, you may have to look at the common conclusion. You can ask me a question, will there be a lot of time which will be consumed as part of doing an a priori algorithm? Certainly yes. But then looking at the efficiency component, a priori will be the best and effective algorithm to since it finds out all possible combination of item sets at least once it would have been scanned. So, for from that list by looking at the minimum support and the minimum confidence this would certainly fetch the best possible results. So, this is what I am tending to say for every scans over different iterations we have fixed up the minimum threshold as 0.5. So, accordingly results have been generated. So, this is how we tend to find frequent item sets and this is the algorithm which is closely associated with a priori. This gives us the complete intention of identifying how the candidates have candidate sets have been generated, how do we fix up the minimum support and minimum confidence. Majorly the algorithm takes up a value of minimum support by looking at the minimal support how effectively this algorithm could fetch or this could be applied for different applications so that we get an effective result. As I have told you this a priori candidate generation has got two steps one is called a join the other one is called a prune. Join initially tries assuming all possible combinations whereas prune is cut off by the minimal support value. So, this tends to remove some of the unwanted or unpossible combinations, not possible, not frequent set combinations, these are being taken out of the item set generation so that we can produce the best of the productive patterns. So, this helps derive rules from frequent item sets. We have another common case where frequent item sets are not equal to association rules. So, one more step is required to find the association rules where we have for each frequent item set x, for each proper non-empty subset A of x, let B is equal to x minus A. When we write a rule A implies B is an association rule only if the confidence of the rule is greater than or equal to the minimum confidence. Whereas, the support of the rule is equal to support of A and B and confidence of the rule is equal to support of A and B divided by the support of A. Only if this condition is being satisfied, then we say it as frequent item set is equal to association rules. This is the example of deriving a rule from the frequent item set, where the major purpose is to find out a very common frequent items 2, 3, 4, which has been purchased very commonly with a minimum support of 50 percent, then a proper non empty subset would be. 2, 3 that is possible next level combinations 2, 3, 2, 4, 3, 4 and individual values like 2, 3 and 4 with the support values as 50 percent, 50 percent, 75 percent for all. These generation, these values generate association rules like purchase of 2 and 3 leads to 4, 2 and 4 leads to 3, 3 and 4 leads to 2 with the confidence values as mentioned. Whereas, taking out a combination, taking out individual item value might lead to another combination of values which can also produce a confidence values. But having assumed a minimum support value of 50 percent, all these can be taken in as well for this rule. But there are certain questions which arises our mind which can be taken as a small exercise as part of this session. This step is not a time consuming as frequent item set generation, why? So, by way of deriving rules, we say this step will not be so time consuming, but then you may have to answer why. And at the same time, it is very easy to speed up using techniques such as parallel processing. So, as you might have seen using parallel databases, the intention is to run all the individual processes together, so that we enhance or we trend to produce within the given time. So, can we do actually a parallel processing for all these list of queries? The intention with which I have started explaining on the association rule is the efficiency of this association rule or a priori algorithm. 
but then one common disadvantage is on the time. So, can we do parallel processing on all the possible combinations so that it can improvise on the speed up also. So, do we really need candidate generation for deriving association rules for which we might need another algorithm which is called frequent pattern growth algorithm or an FP tree algorithm. FP stands for frequent pattern tree generation. So, in this session we have been looking very close into one of the association rule mining techniques. I have started explaining about a priori algorithm where I have described about association rules which are nothing but are different form uh, different from other data mining algorithms and I have talked about a priori property which can reduce search space thereby reducing in terms of two interestingness measures one is called support and the other one is called confidence. By fixing up a threshold value on the minimum support and minimum confidence we can reduce on the search space. And we have looked at mining long association rules is a daunting task where students are encouraged to mine a long rules but then they may not fix up a minimum support and minimum confidence. This kind of association rules can be used for multiple applications like I have started explaining in terms of marketing by giving a simple example of market basket analysis. This can even be extended for other applications like inventory management system and so. The major composition of this lecture talks more on the frequent item set purchases which was found to be a practically useful concept. Thank you.